Aaron Heinzman here with D2Football.com. I'm talking with uh, Daryl Morris, the head coach at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. Uh, coach Morris, thank you for joining me today. You bet. Appreciate to be here. And Nebraska Kearney, one of five teams to join the MIAA this year. Uh, the new expanded conference is upon us. But for you, Coach, a bit of a return to the conference, uh, being a 1983 Northwest Missouri State University graduate, uh, talk about uh, your, your time there, and uh, do, you, do you keep in touch with uh, anyone in the program at the university at any level? Well, you know, uh, I was there 200 years ago, so uh, Jim Ray was the head football coach there and since has retired, and, uh, you know, there's some guys that coach for a living, uh, Jeff Conway and, and some guys like that, but for the most part, uh, I've been a local for the last 26 years, so uh, it's about all I can do to keep track of what we're doing here at UNK. Absolutely. Do you still, uh, uh, you know, do, be, besides rooting for UNK, do you do you pull for Northwest Missouri when they uh, when they play in the big games that they, that they so often do? Well, I've always been, you know, when they were playing for the national championship, you know, always been in favor of them. So yeah, you pull for them, but uh, uh, it's it's a full time job just uh, trying to keep our football program competitive. Absolutely. It, it certainly is, and you've done a good job at that now in your uh, 12th year at Nebraska Kearney. Uh, we, we talk, I, I mentioned the, the new MIAA this year, and uh, not just new for the conference, a lot of new things going on in Kearney this year. Uh, you lose Jake Spitzelberger, a big loss to your program, but not only that, you know, almost an entirely new offense. Then you throw on your offensive coordinator, leaves to become a head coach somewhere else. Uh, lots of new, new, new for you this year. How how does one adjust to, to so many changes all at once? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. They don't let them play forever in college football, so they, they, there's kind of a, an expected departure of players every year. It's a pretty predictable uh, process. I mean, they get to play four years, and after that they got to they gotta leave. So uh, we've recruited to replace Jake Spitzberger, and we've recently got another commitment out of a quarterback in Arizona that we're excited about. So... I think we'll have a, a lively uh, competition for our starting job this fall. We do not have a starting guy on the depth chart right now, so it's going to be an interesting spring. Coaches come and go all the time. It's, there's been years where I've lost two or three guys at one time. So, uh, you know, that's just something you get accustomed to. You go out and find guys that are good coaches and good people and good mentors, and uh, you break, get them up to speed with what you do and what you believe, and uh, then they, they get it done for you. You mentioned the quarterback uh, not having anybody as a set number one on the uh, depth chart yet. Who are the guys that are going to be battling, battling it out for that top spot? Well, I think uh, we've got a guy by the name of uh, Devin Romero who's been here for about three years. He's a junior college uh, transfer guy but uh, out of LA Harbor, but uh, he's been around for a little while, has played some games for us as a backup to Jake. We have Eric Kaiser, who's the brother of Kyle Kaiser, who's an All American wide receiver for us. Presently playing in, in uh, Europe. Uh, Eric looked good during spring ball. And, uh, you know, we've got some young, uh, true freshmen coming in. I, I, you know, I think it'll be tough for them to, to get in that hunt, but uh, good football players. And then most recently, uh, a young man by the name of Tyler Diamora, uh, who was at Arizona, the University of Arizona here most recently in spring ball and worked his way up to their number two spot before he decided to leave. So uh, I think there'll be a good competition between uh, Romero and Kaiser and Diamora. And uh, we'll have to make a decision relatively quickly as we get into uh, camp. But uh, whoever uh, gets the job, I think, will be a quality player and be able to get the job done for us. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, certainly a, a much different season for you this year, coming off a 10-2 and season in 2011. Uh, like I said before, no, nothing terribly new for uh, Up and Kearney, the uh, a program with a, with a long history of winning. Um what what are the expectations in Kearney this year as you move to a new conference? You you go from a team that that or you, I'm sorry, you go from a conference. The the RMAC only has one team ranked preseason this year now, where now the MIAA you're you're amongst five teams that are ranked preseason. Are the expectations just as high this year as you come in to the MIAA? Well, I think you got to be realistic. We understand our program has got some things we got to get accomplished to get real competitive in the MIAA. And now that's not going to happen overnight. We want to be a competitive football team. We want to be a classy football program. Uh, we want people to realize they played a quality football team when they played us. Uh, how many games we will win or not win, I could not tell you at this particular point in time. There's so much. There's so many variables involved in having a successful season. We're going to need to stay 
healthy. We're not going to have the depth that some of the teams in MIAA have uh, for another couple of years or so. So we're going to have to stay healthy. But uh, we have a system that works for us. We have a, a bunch of kids in our program that believe in this system, and uh, they're going to play hard and uh, work hard, prepare hard, and then we'll let the chips fall when they may. You mentioned there's a there's a bunch of things that that need to be done for you to be competitive in the MIAA. Any any anything specific that you know that your your team needs to improve on from last year, or or overall that that uh, that you know just has to be a, a top priority for you this year. Well, I mean, football is a game of attrition. So coming from a league that only had 28 scholarships in it, and we never had 28, we still don't have 28 scholarships. So. We're going to be behind uh, financially in terms of our ability to recruit uh, depth in our football program. I think our starting 22, uh, 11 on both sides of the ball will be very competitive. It's going to be game 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 when we start getting banged up and I'm throwing maybe a walk-on kid on the field to replace that starter and they're still putting a scholarship guy out there. I think that's probably where we're going to be. And until our institution and myself can, can – get our uh, fundraising ramped up, which we've begun to do, and it's, it's uh, paid off quite well for us here recently. But until we can get uh, up to 32, 33, 36 scholarships, we're going to struggle a little bit. We understand that. Uh, and, you know, we're a small market team, uh, if you if you will, uh, in reference to the NFL, you know. So we're going to have to continue to, to look under rocks and find kids from all over the country that might be willing to come here and help us out. And you talk about those those financial challenges uh, joining the – the MIAA this year. Speaking solely as the, the the football coach at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, did the school make the right decision in coming to the MIAA? Well, I don't think there's any question because it's not just a sports decision that you make uh, when you change conferences. We had a lot. We had kids, not so much football, but we had a lot of basketball players and volleyball players and baseball players that spent a tremendous amount of time uh, on bus. Uh, the travel in the MIAA is a walk across the street for us coming out of the RMAC. Sure. There are seven schools closer to us in the MIAA than the closest school to us in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. So uh, getting out of that uh, transition process or that transportation system where you're just on the bus for hours and hours and hours and hours and missing school and that kind of thing, uh, it was a good move for us, no question. And then to align ourselves with schools that are much like our mission statement as an institution there's no question it was the right thing for us to do the wins will come it's going to be a little bit of a process people i think understand that and i think they'll be patient with us and uh, i'll probably be the most impatient guy when it comes to that but uh, i also understand the reality of our situation so plenty of positives joining the miaa then this year uh what's the the one thing you'll miss about your old conference well, just some of the relationships you have, you know, and then the, just the familiarity with it. I mean, we knew where we were going. We knew where the stadium was. We knew the kind of football program. We knew what they did offensively, defensively. We knew the people that ran the hotels we stayed at. I mean, just all those kinds of things, you know, just the familiarity with it. Uh, uh, and then some of the coaches that were in that league I, I enjoyed, uh, you know, visiting with and meeting and all that kind of thing. But uh, for the most part, it's just going to be – it's exciting to go to a new place. So there's always – apprehension about change but you know hey we'll make the best of it and uh, we're, we're up for the challenge like you said we're going to play hard we're not we're going to go into every ball game planning to win so with the MIAA football schedule a little bit up in the air over the next couple of years with the departure of UNO and and uh, Truman State since the uh the, the, the four-year planner came out a couple of years ago there, there's going to be some open dates on on the schedule if if uh and, and if that holds true and you, you don't go back to an 11-team conference schedule, is the first call you make to an RMAC school to fill, to fill in that, that 10th or 11th game? Well, you know, that, that's a possibility if things would match up. You know, Shattered State was always a great uh, great rival game for us, especially when Danny Woodhead played. Uh, we got large crowds in that game. So Wayne State, we played for 100 years in a row. So, you know, that that's a very distinct possibility that we might go back to one of those games with that our fan base is familiar with and would be excited about us playing again and would enjoy the contest and that kind of thing. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see and see where the MIAA ultimately decides to go, whether they want to play 11-game conference schedule uh, and then rotate the rotate the other the teams that you don't play every year or whether they want to go a 10-game schedule and then play a non-conference game. We'll just have to wait and see what they decide. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do decide with the uh... – 
lots of shakeup in this conference. Let's go back to you a little bit, a little bit, Coach. Now, like I said, in your twelfth year at at UNK, uh, plenty of success uh, the, the the whole time, pretty much. Um, and a lot of a lot of coaches I'm kind of used to here in the MI double in, in the MI double they they're they're coming in trying to build programs. You weren't exactly like that. In fact, uh, coming in, you were just the the third head coach since 1955 there in Kearney. Talk about how how you've been able to stick around and and with, when when you took this job, did you know it was a long term deal? No, I, I didn't. I had you know no intention of staying uh, in Carney for 26 years, but you know things just played out the way they did. I was from a military family. I would moved before. It's not that cool packing up everything in your house and moving someplace else. Uh, I met my wife here in Carney. Uh, my boss Claire Borhoff, who's a longtime head coach here. Uh, began to get towards he was retirement age. I was in line here, and rather than go someplace else and get in line, I just said, all right, I'll play my hand out here, see how it works out for me. I was fortunate enough to get the position, and it's worked out uh, so far. So uh, Carney's a nice place to be. It's a great city, and the, and the institution is uh, solid as a rock, and they treat me well. So, I mean, it's got all the things I'm looking for. Talk about going back to the, the losses of the of the coach and the players. You say that the players they come and go. You're used to that. It's a it seems a little excessive this year. Quarterback to your running backs, left tackle, right tackle, left guard, but wide receiver, tight end. It goes on and on. And then your your offense coordinator. What what's the what's the hard the hardest thing to replace that that bulk of players on your on the offensive side of the ball or the the, the guy who's running it for you. Well, I think, you know, I've known Russ Martin. Russ Martin and I were assistant coaches here when this place was still Carney State College. And then uh, Russ, you know, went off and had uh, a few different jobs here and there. But, uh, you know, he and I coached together a long time. And, and Russ was a very good football coach. And we always went into games, uh, you know, very sound with, a, with an organized, systematic attack and plan uh, and in place. So uh, we'll miss that. Uh, but uh, Coach Siegel, our new offensive coordinator, will – uh, certainly put his stamp on things and, and tweak a few things and, and help us to continue to develop offensively. I think probably just the four-year starting quarterback and that ex- the experience that Jake Spitzelberger had in our system and the understanding of our system that he had to the point where he was a coach on the field, uh, that, that's probably difficult to replace. So it's going to take somebody else uh, a year to probably figure things out to where they have a very – functional understanding of what we're doing and they can also uh, become a coach on the field and be a guy that can actually bring intelligence off the field and to the sideline to help coaches uh, you know adjust the, the, the game plan as the game unfolds so I think that's probably going to be difficult to replace. Now with, with, with everything on especially on the offensive side of the ball being so new this year all those players and the offense coordinator does that, does that give you the chance to kind of Start fresh, uh, go go with something new in your philosophy, or or for you, uh, is it is it be, is it business as, as usual? Um, no, no big changes as far as, as as how you see your offense going. Well, I've always been a guy that uh, you know I subscribe to the, the theory or the philosophy that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, when I hired Coach Siegel, the the, the deal for him was. Uh, it was easier for one guy to come in and learn what 50 guys already knew rather than 50 guys try to learn what a new guy knew. So uh, we're pretty much what we are, and and we understand what we do. We know how to recruit to what we do offensively. Uh, We understand a lot of the different things about a uh, no-huddle, up-tempo, fast-paced offense, how to attack people in formation, how to attack them with a run-threat quarterback and a throwing quarterback as well as a, a you know, a wide receiver and a tailback. So, you know, we get that three-headed dragon back there, and I think we can cause people some problems. So we're probably going to stay with what we know best, and that's the the spread offense uh, that's going to attack you vertically and then uh, also horizontally. And as well as we're going to try to, uh, you know, make it go so fast that uh, we can maybe hang in ball games where we're not as good as the opponent, but uh, we can wear them out a little bit. Coach, uh, preseason polls coming up soon. Who who do you like as number one in the MIAA? Well, I, I've always been the guy that hey, Pittsburgh State won it last year, and until somebody else like a heavyweight champion, until you knock him out, he's the heavyweight champion. So, as far as I'm concerned, Pittsburgh State, the defending national champions, and 
I saw no reason why they would not be the number one ranked team in the MIAA.